point to where you don't have to rely on seeing a rainbow in the cloud. You don't have to rely on seeing a water to part. Ain't it good to know tonight that God is going to bless us who walk by faith and not by sight? Ain't it good to know that no matter what you see going on the outside, that you know that God is at work in your life and that God loves you and that God is there for you. And whether you see him or not, he's there. He is there and he is at work. I'll tell you what, I better boo this before I trip up. For real. It'd be a trip in here tonight for real for me. But, but listen, I, I'm going to tell you, this psalm right here, I, I spoke to the young people out of some parts of it, but it's really been on my mind and really been on my heart. And so we're just going to kind of dive into it tonight. So if you would stand in honor of for reading God's Word. Verse 1 says this. It says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Lord, we pray you have blessed the reading and the preaching of your Word tonight. For your good and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, it is awesome. It is awesome to just be able to serve God. To just be able to serve God. To just be able to know that you know that you know that you're saved. To know that you know that you know that you're called to be used by God. It is awesome to have that going on in your life. It is awesome to have that surety. It gives you a confidence. It gives you some courage, not based on your strength, but on the strength of God at work in you. And the psalmist here, he was speaking about some things that that really and truly can help you in your life, that if you get a hold of them. But listen, the biggest thing is not just that it helps you. The biggest thing is that it will help you to be a better Christian and be able to better serve God. Because it's not just about how we feel in us. It's about what we can do for God. And so these words tonight can help you to better serve God. And that's what we all want to try to do is serve God better. We all want to be better people. We all want to know God better. And the psalmist explains tonight a lot of things about God. He said, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting, my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path, my lying down, are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me um, behind and before. Lay thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from thy fear, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? You see, it speaks about God's thoughts about us. That's one thing that, that sometimes we don't think about. You know, we know what we think of ourselves. We know what other people think of us. But, you know, this is just like God's thoughts about us. God knew him. God knew his thoughts. God knew his words. God knew everything about him. God had searched him. He looked at every little aspect of his life. God knew him better than he knew himself. And then he starts to speak, and he starts to talk about, uh, in verse 7, he starts to talk about, you know, somewhat his attitude toward God. Because we all just need to be honest tonight and admit that there are times in our life, there's some time in your life where you just wanted to get away from God. Where you just wanted to get away from God. You understand when, when the presence of God, the thoughts of God... Um, I mean, the conviction of God, whatever it may have been, the call of God, you think of Jonah, the call of God on his life, the commands of God. Sometimes we want the, the commands that God gave us to be far out of our minds so we can just do what we want. I mean, you know, we try to flee from God in so many ways. It's not just physically sometimes. Jonah actually physically tried to flee from God, but sometimes mentally we try to flee from God. Sometimes with our life altogether, with our heart, we try to flee from God. But the thing that the psalmist had come to understand was there was not one place. There was not one little speck of dust. There was not one little um, um, a vapor of air. There was not one space 10 million miles away in the galaxy, 10 million feet under. Uh, well, it ain't even 10 million feet under, so I don't think. But all the way to the center of the earth he could go. It didn't matter where he went. There was no place he could flee to to go away from God. That God is always with you. And that is an amazing thought that can help you to be a better Christian. Because it helps you to understand the simple fact that you can't get away from God. But listen, to there's also no place that God can't go. There's also no place that God won't be. And we need God in those places. We need God in those deep, dark places. We need God in those stormy times, those impatient times, those times we don't see it, those times we don't hear it, those times we don't feel it. Man, we need God in those places in our life. And the amazing thing about Jesus Christ, the amazing thing about God himself is that God is everywhere all at once. And that God is where, wherever you're at tonight. God is with you. And he's made a promise to you that he would never leave you. He would never forsake you. And the psalmist did figure out as bad as his humanity and his rebellious spirit wanted to flee from God, that even if he wanted to, there was no place he could go. It was a useless thought. It was something he could just 
put out of his mind. And you know tonight, if we'd put that out of our mind and we quit running from God and we just embrace God tonight and let God have his will and his way in our lives, God would just amaze you what he'd do in your life. He would just amaze you what he'd do in your heart if you just embrace him tonight. I mean, not just, not just tolerate him. Sometimes we just want to kind of tolerate God. You know what I mean? It, it's kind of like sometimes whenever you've got teenagers, you just tolerate them, you know? Sometimes whenever your spouse, you know, don't listen just like they ought to, and you know you got all the wisdom right, and you got everything right, and you know you're right, and they just ain't listening to you. You just kind of tolerate them, you know? You, you understand what I mean? You're in the same room, you're saying things to each other, you might even be cordial, but you really ain't just all lovey-dovey. What God wants to do and what you need to do tonight is understand that we need to embrace God. We just need to wrap our arms around God as He wraps His hand around us and embrace God, the mighty power of God. But see, the thing that people won't want to do, they want the power of God, just like we talked about Wednesday night, young people, without the purity of God. First, what has to take place is you need the purity before you can have the power. God wants to bestow the power of God upon you and it work in your life, but the purity's got to come first. Just like in the early church in Acts, we read about how the power of God fell on the day of Pentecost. But what people don't really realize is they were praying and they were fasting and they were up in that upper room and they were spending time with God and they were getting right with God and God had purified their hearts and brought them to one place, one mind, one heart. God had done that. And then when it happened, when all that took place and the purity was there and they got right before Almighty God, then the power fell. And it just amazed people at what went on. But let me tell you something. That power doesn't come without a cost. Jesus Christ paid for us to be able to have the power of God on our lives on the cross of Calvary. His blood is what purifies you tonight. And I'm telling you, we need pure hearts if we're going to have filled hearts with the Holy Spirit. You can't have all that junk and hang on to all that junk and be pure before Almighty God. We need purity. And it's hard to embrace. See, we want to embrace the kind of purity that involves you know, not looking at pornography or not doing this or, you know, not cursing or, you know, not, not killing somebody. We don't look at that kind of purity and we say that's far enough. But what God wants, He wants all the hatred gone. He wants all the, the wicked thoughts gone. He wants all the evil intents of your heart. He wants the greed gone. He wants the pride gone. He wants all the things you like and make you feel empowered. He wants your control of your life and your mind gone. He wants you to understand and be submitted to Him. God wants your heart to be pure before Him tonight because God wants to pour out His power on you tonight. Amen? He wants to use you tonight. But you've got to get pure before Almighty God. But He says there's nowhere He could go. He said there's nowhere I go. He said, listen to what He goes on to say. He said, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Listen to what He says right here. Even there shall... Thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. That's his hand of power. That's the place of power. God's powerful hands upholding you. There ain't nothing you can pull down the hand of God. God has got you in his hand. Ain't going nowhere is what he said. He said, thy hand upholds me. He said, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me. See, here's what I want you to see tonight. There's a distinct difference between the way we feel and the way we look and the way we think about things and the way God thinks about things. There's a really big difference. And it's something we can't help right now. We're just human. He's God. But look what he says right here. Look what he says. I love this. I, I, I've just been amazed with these couple of verses right here. And I, I, I can't get to the depths of them. I, I can't wrap my mind around them. But look what he says. He says, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me. You ever feel that way sometimes? You ever feel that no matter which way you turn, you're just surrounded by darkness? You ever feel like, I, I hear people tell me there's not a week that goes by that somebody don't mean to pray for them because they just feel like everything's falling apart or everything's closing in around them. Sometimes it may not even be real things. It may, not even, it may just be worries about things, but just this darkness pulls in around them and they just feel trapped. But look what it says, and they don't know which way to go. They don't know which way to turn. That's why they come to you because they don't understand what to do. They feel helpless and hopeless and in the dark. But look at what God says. It says, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. But what he says in verse 12, he goes on to explain it even more. He says, Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. Now, I, I try to think about that physically, and I'm just telling you, 
I really, I really can't comprehend that. Because I have eyes as when it's dark I can't see. And when it's light I can. But I'm telling you, God has the kind of eyes, His all-seeing eyes, that even the darkness, even in the darkness, it shineth as in the day. It just amazes me. It says, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Don't you, don't, you start to get, don't you start to get the theme of this psalm? Don't you start to get the stuff that really helped the man out? Don't you start to get it? He said God's hand's not going to move. He said there's no place that God's not at. He said there's nothing God can't see. And no place God won't be. Don't you start to see that he's starting to understand that he sees the world differently than God does? And that helps a person to understand that, that we see the world differently than God does. We see the times and the temperatures and, and the trials. We see them differently than God does. God sees them without fear. God sees them without worry. God knows the end. God knows the deal. He knows every detail. We see it looking, we can only see a little ways, even with the light of God. It's a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. We don't get to see all the way down the road, but God sees it, He knows it, and He's not worried tonight. And that helps a person when we understand that, that we understand God's thoughts about us. And we start to understand how God thinks about us. Flip, well, I've got to flip my page and get there, but go to verse 17. Go to verse 17. Look at, look at this. We're just going to jump on down there. If this doesn't bless you, they just something wrong with you. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, you you just you just a sour puss if this doesn't bless you. I mean, I, they make fun of me sometimes because mine don't do as bad as my daddy. But man, when my daddy got mad, and you know he didn't kind of get his way, his old lips pooched out. I mean, I, I can't even I can't even make myself try to make it look like it does. I don't know, <laughs> but. I mean, he just get a bad attitude sometimes. I've seen little kids be the same way. Little kids don't get what they want. They're just a sourpuss. You know? And, and they some people, they some people, I'm telling you, they some people, that it don't matter how much they're blessed, it don't matter what they're giving, it don't matter how good the day is, they're going to find something wrong with it. That's right. I'm just telling you, if you want them people tonight, just fake it if you got to. Don't affect us with it. You know, at least smile when you hear it, because it should bless you. All right, listen to what he says. He said, how precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. Oh, listen, how great is the sum of them. That's an accountant's term. That's like a number. That's like when they all add it up. This, this is what he said. Look what he says in, in verse 18. He said, if I should count them. He's saying if he took the time, if there was some kind of way that he could take each time that God thought about Jesse Crawford, each time that he thought about Janice Thorne, each time that he thought about Trey and Kyle and John, each time he thought about every one of them, if he could take just the time that God thought about him, him personally, the psalmist himself, just that one person, just that one person, listen to what he said he would have if he added them all up. <clears throat> he said... They are more in number than the sand. Amen. Now that ought to bless you tonight. Amen. That ought to bless you tonight. I don't know about you. Man, I cannot, I cannot even think about counting the sand in the beach. It's hard to even keep up with the sand that gets all in your body in different places when you go to the beach. I mean, it's just hard to get them all off of you when you get home. But he said, he said, it's in the word of God that God's thoughts about him were more than the sand. I, I, I don't know if you've ever seen that in the word of God, but man, I'm telling you, when I run across this, I was just like, wow. I was just like, wow. All the times, you just think about all the times you think, you ask the question, where's God at? When's God going to move? Why has God forgot about me? There's no blooming way that God could think about a man as many times as the sand in the, in the sand everywhere. The sand everywhere. 
There's not a time God ain't thinking about you. That's what he's trying to say. He's not literally trying to count them. He's just trying to tell you there's not one moment that God hadn't thought about you. And get this now. Get this. If you couple this with Jeremiah, if you couple this with Jeremiah, if you couple this where Jeremiah said that he knew you before he even formed you in your mother's womb, and he had named him. He had already set him aside for what he wanted him to do before he was even born. You think about this. It's not just that there wasn't a time since you've been living and breathing that God has, hadn't thought about you. He's been thinking about you for all eternity. He's been thinking about you before time was. God loves you that much. That's how much God thinks about you. And I'm telling you tonight, if we get hold of that, know that God loves us the way He loves us. He looks after us the way He does. And He thinks about us the way He does. And I'm telling you tonight, it will bless your heart. It will bless your soul to understand God's thoughts about you. God's thoughts about you. God thinks about you. God loves you. God loves you. When we do that, we end up at the same place that the psalmist did. Look in verse 23 and 24. When we understand that, we begin to trust God in a way that we embrace God and we allow God to have His complete will and way in our life. Look what He says. He said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. And try me, and know my thoughts. And he said, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Now I'm just telling you, when a fellow gets serious like this with God and starts talking to God like this, he's done thought about all he could think about, the wickedness in him. And he's wanting God to get every little bit of it, even the parts he ain't seen, even the parts he ain't thought about. He's wanting to be so clean before God. You say, why is he wanting to be so clean before God? Because he could be so filled with God. He could be so close to God. And I'm telling you, I don't want just a, a little time with God just for a moment. Man, I want sustained time with God moving in our community. I want to see revival. Now, I read about revival. I read about revival. I was listening to Revival Hymn this afternoon. There's a, one sermon that's preached. I've probably listened to uh, over hundreds of times, I know. And I'm telling you, I just sit there and I listen to the man speaking about revival and what God has done in places. And it just makes my heart long for what he's saying, what he's seen. And I want to see it in my generation. I want to see it in my time. And I mean, I've listened to sermon after sermon about revival. I've read books about revival. I've preached about revival. But I'm telling you what I want to see. I want to see real revival. I want to see it in my lifetime. I mean, I ain't being, I ain't being selfish. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see God move greatly in my lifetime, in my community. In my community. I hear about it in other places in the world. I want to see it in my community. I want to see God turn loose in a way like we've never seen. But what we've got to do first is we've got to purify our hearts. We've got to single out our ways. We can't be double-minded. We've got to get our minds solely on God. And we've got to follow after Him with all our heart. And I tell you, I have been so blessed. I have been so blessed by just God moving in our church. And I know y'all seen this morning how he moved in our young people this weekend. And I tell you what, he moved in our adults that was with him too. But I tell you what else he's doing. He's moving in a lot of young people in our church. And a lot of older people in our church. It ain't just every day you see a class, older folks like that growing like that. That just ain't every day. That just ain't every day when you see young men start to, start to hunger for God starting to want to learn to study the Word of God. It ain't just every day. But I see it. And I see a lot of things you don't see. Because people talk to me about things they don't talk to everybody about. But I'm just going to tell you tonight. I got the privilege tonight to um, take one of our young men and bring him on up here. You come on up here, Brian. And Brian's got something he just wants to t um, say to the church tonight. And I'm so proud of him. And I think you're going to get to see a little bit of some of the things I've been seeing. And so, um, you just share with them what you want to say tonight. I've been coming to church here for about four years now, and I felt like I had control of my life. I felt like, you know, I had this pride. I, I got it under control, and then I realized I don't. Ha I don't have nothing under control. I don't have nothing. 
I had a situation with Kaylee, my mom and dad. They're all in the hospital, and I was like, I just I didn't have nothing. There was nothing I could do about it, nothing. There was nothing I could do. I called Brother Greg. I said, hey, this is what I got going on. He said, well, I'll pray for you, brother. And we prayed. He prayed to me on the phone, and it, it just come over me. I said, you know, I ain't in control of none of my life. I just had to give all of it, not, live, not ride the fence, just give all of it to God. And I did, and I just, the burden was just lifted off my back. And joy, everything was established in my life again. I just, I just opened my heart. It's just great.